He is an offensive lineman. He is a former pro bowler. His name is John Runyon. After his playing days, actually moved to Capitol Hill. Two terms as a Republican congressman, and now he has transitioned. Just finished his first season as the vice president of policy and rules administration. John Runyon, welcome to the stage here in Indianapolis. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So take me through on an average week for you, an average week during the regular season, what your job is like, what your job entails, and what you are looking for on Sunday. Sunday, typically, um, I, can be in, I can be in New York. I can be in the office. I typically am at home. Um, I have both network feeds on and I have red zone on. And I'm looking for uniform infractions. So what I, I oversee the uniform enforcement policy. So I have two former players at every stadium that help me do this. So they're there, you know, eye, eyes on the field. They're there looking for players that socks are out of compliance, shoes are out of compliance, t-shirts hanging out, illegal branding, logos on places that are not supposed to be, logos that aren't supposed to be on our field. So they're there marking all this up on a sheet pregame, and they hand it to usually, it's usually the strength coach or the equipment manager of the team when they go in after warm-up. Sometimes we have to remove players from the field to get compliance. And take me through an appeal. Are most of them done via conference call, or has anyone ever gotten on a plane, come to New York to argue about a size? They have that option. Most of them are done on conference call. So typically there's, you know, on an appeal, say for a uniform appeal, because I do the uniform appeals, um, it'll be myself, the agent, most of the time the player, and most of the time the, um, the, the union. And they're going to tell their story of why they did what they did, you know, if they're going to correct. And I'll, I'll, I'll start it off by literally verbatim reading them the rule from the rule book and say, this is the rule that we charged you with. And it's actually on the letter that you got that I sent to you last week. It, 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 sometimes it's tough. And I'm trying. All I want is compliance. I don't, I don't want your money. When certain players want to make a statement that they think is a good statement to make, whether it's, for example, Antonio Brown honoring the late Arnold Palmer, or whether it's Peyton Manning some years ago, before you were in this position, when you were still a player, wanting to honor the late Johnny Unitas with his cleats. How do you deal with those scenarios on a week-by-week -week basis? Because I can't imagine those are easy. No, they're not. But a lot of those guys, they do it time and time again. And what they're really doing is they're putting it on an Instagram, they're getting their hits, and they typically comply. But people think they wear, they wear these shoes throughout the game. No, we're on top of it. I've already known about it. And, I, and I, I, I've gotten to a few of them and had some actual conversations this offseason. I go, when you start doing that kind of stuff and, and we go there, where, where, where do we draw the line? I also know as well that the My Cause, My Cleats campaign, which the league had this past year, was maybe an answer to some of those issues from the past where – Players did have legitimate causes, mm -hmm. and they didn't just want to wear their cleats pregame, as you said, get the hit on Instagram, take them off once they've been worn, then go out there and, and, and wear their normal league-sanctioned cleats. You wanted to, the league wanted to, give players a chance to express themselves if they could raise money for good causes and actually make a legitimate statement. Yeah, and I think, I think Brandon Marshall was actually the point on that. He actually approached uh, Commissioner Goodell about that, and Commissioner... You know, got with our with our team and, and got it out there, and then you know, we were kind of you know uneasy about it, but it, it became very sex successful. Our biggest worry was the vetting the vetting of the shoes because now you're opening it up and it's like somebody's going to try something silly. It didn't happen that we found or we know of, but that potential is always there when you when you open that floodgate. And I assume it's something with, without giving anything away that we could see in the future as well. Continue. Yes, I believe so. All right. What about celebra uh, celebrations, excessive celebrations? How difficult? Because you, that was one that we heard a lot from the players this year. I don't know what I can and cannot do, even though, as you said, it, the rules are there. They're printed. You're given the rules in the preseason. But there seemed this year, maybe more than in, in, in past years, more complaints. Well, why can't I have a little more fun? There, was, there were a lot of complaints, and I, you look at the numbers, yeah, they were up, but I think a lot of the numbers were up because one of our rules, we have choreographed celebrations. Mm -hmm. So now you got two or more people involved in the same act. 
And you know, that's, that, was one of those, that was one of those things that now you have multiple people going, so the fine goes way up. So. How do you determine what's choreographed? Most people would say if it's more than one person, it's therefore choreographed. Yeah. Has anyone come in to say, no, I, I, I was freestyling. I that just made that up as I went. That was actually the first choreographed celebration of the year. <laughs> With and, the Giants and Odell. And I actually did a very ta similar talk like this with Victor Cruz at the Super Bowl about that specific play. And I said, when I administer this rule to get it to go into choreograph, you two are involved in the same celebration. Now, through the appeals process, Victor's got thrown out because that's his staple of his dance. And then Odell got talked to, and I think his actually was drastically reduced for that, but say, just to let him know, you can't do that type of stuff because now you've choreographed a celebration with one of your teammates by doing what you did. And why is there, why say no choreograph? I mean, what, what, what I guess, if I'm a player, I would say, John, why, why can't so, I choreograph? Well, something? where does the line stop? Do we, do we get a chorus line on the, on, on the goal line now and guys are doing leg okay, kicks I'll, down I'll, I'll, But that's... But I'll, I'll be Victor Cruz here and I'll say, yeah, John, I want to do that. Why can't I? It's the rule. But you've heard, I'm sure you've heard uh, players talk way. your ear off. I, I, I do this, and I, I, I've said this to several players about this. I goes, when, when, you're, when we're looked at as the example of the NFL, mm -hmm. right, I said, you know, I, I had two daughters play flag football for years. I goes, do you want your seven-year-old daughter doing some of that stuff after she scores a touchdown? And that's what the commissioner often says. And he you says, know, it's, and he it's said it repeatedly this past season, it's not just sportsmanship. It's teaching, you mentioned your family, your daughters, it's teaching kids the right way to play the game. Not only safely play the game, but with a certain level of class yeah, and tact. And, and I do get, we're, we're here to entertain our fans. That's what it's about. But at some point where we say, we, we let them do up to a certain point and then we, we have to draw the line somewhere because it will, everyone will try at one point to one up everyone. Sure. And then it just becomes a sideshow. And that's what we're trying to stay away. Have from. you ever laughed at a celebration and went, "Yeah, but I'm gonna have to find you"? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> creative stuff you you do, but you're like, Man, you just stepped over the line, <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> Cody, we have a fan question ready. Where? Go ahead. Hi guys, I was just hoping to ask you a question about uh, the way a penalty is called during a game. Uh, and a specific example, I'm a Browns fan. Uh, there was a penalty on Terrell Pryor for. Uh, essentially throwing the ball that kind of accidentally fell out of his hand, but he, the ball hit a, a Ravens player. And it was after the play, there was a penalty on the Ravens during the play, and they ruled it that they had to replay the down. And I was just kind of curious on if there's a penalty during the play and a penalty after the play, how that gets offset. You remember the play, John? It was taunting, final possession. They called prior. They got a first down, and he, he kind of held the ball out. And, and, and it looked as if the ruling of the field was that he dropped it on the DB and he got yeah, called for Yeah, I think I remember. Dean would probably be a better one for this question, but I believe the way the rules are ministered, that the, those tend to offset and you have to replay the down. So there's, there's different scenarios, I believe, in the, in the rule book on how that is, not how it's officiated, how it's actually what processed or executed for, from that point. And, that's, that's what I believe happened. That would be a better question for Dean, but I know that happens, it happens a lot. Now, to be fair, a couple of my colleagues at NFL Network, former players, we, we watched that replay, and I, I was with you. I said, there's no way that was taunting. And a couple of guys who shall remain nameless go, no, no, that was taunting. <laughs> that, that, that was taunting. He held the ball. He didn't have to hold the ball out. And then he, he kind of dropped it on the DB, but that was something that last year there was certainly a new emphasis on. You can't point in players' faces. You can't drop balls. You can't drop that ball on a guy. You can't step over a guy. And that goes back to the sportsmanship issue we talked about before. Yeah, and, and it's something that's been in the rule book for quite a few years and just trying to, trying to reel it in. It's, here's the thing. It's, you can't do any of that in NCAA football. It's not allowed. And all of a sudden we get this. And it, it, is, it is really there to try to you know, keep that sportsmanship it's the it, game. I would say game is it, taunting has taken the sportsmanship to a level I don't think we want to go. Sure. Because you don't want that. You know, I think the way the rule is written is that ill will between opponents. You don't want that caused by something that's happening after the play. The ill will sh could should be from you getting whooped by your opponent on the right. field. It shouldn't be by 
extracurricular activity. The, the difference in the NCAA is, though, is that if I'm breaking down the sideline for a 50-yard touchdown, I'm 20 yards ahead of everybody, and if I turn around and wave, they can actually kill the play. Yep. They can and actually put say it right that's not a spot touchdown, foul. it's right there. Spot foul and then 15 exactly. yards back Exactly, we're from not there, there <laughs> in the NFL. Another one from the crowd. So this year was the first time for an overtime in the Super Bowl. Um, as you can tell, I'm probably a big Packer fan. Uh, a couple <laughs> years ago, um, the Packers lost an overtime rule um, for the NFC Championship game. Have there been any talks about changing the overtime rules again uh, where maybe a both teams can get a chance at the football and stuff like that. That's the only thing I've been wondering for the last couple of years. Not that I have heard. I think the big, you know, the biggest thing there, it's tough for this factor. I think at the end of the day, you go into broadcast windows and mm -hmm. how much time you're using. And that's really, unfortunately, part of the influence of that. And to change that, it takes a vote from the owners. So do you have enough to actually try to change the way we do our game? You know. I, I've been, I've been in the league both times when it was sudden death, and then the new rules. And I'm, the, I'm the guy I've that actually, actually doesn't mind sudden death. I've actually played in a tie. Right. <laughs> and and I now I don't necessarily agree with ties, but then again, you, you don't want to have to. During place. the regular season, though, you it's think fine. about a tie. A tie overrides all the tiebreakers at right. the end of the season. And so we it's saw not a couple a bad, of them this year. You don't deal. have to play a six-quarter game. But here's the game. problem: from a player's perspective, I played another quarter. I got another 30 plays in. And it's another health and safety issue. Yeah. And you can have so a game like the Seahawks and the Cardinals this year on Sunday night where you had defenses on the field for 90 plays. Yes. Which isn't healthy for anyone, no, and it's not and a then, good product and then, the the and then it affects you the following week. Exactly. You, you've, you've played a game and a half, and your opponent hasn't. Exactly. And then if you have to go on the road, that's, that's even a bigger issue. Who else do we have? Cowboy fan. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, John. Uh, got a question. From a competition and a celebration standpoint, has there ever been discussed to have a celebration zone off the field, like off to the side? Like a be... dance party zone kind of thing? <laughs> you know, strobe, strobe lights and everything. Strobe lights? <laughs> Technically, there is. It's called the bench area. Okay. It is actually allowed in the bench area. Which is what Odell did this year when he ran over and kissed the kicking net, kind yes. of. But yeah. you're allowed to do that. Dance yeah, you you're allowed do... to go to the bench and stand you, on the bench and look can, at the crowd. You can do that stuff in the bench area. Can I get a big round of applause, please, for John Runyon here, Vice President of Policy and Rules Administration, for taking time out of his day here at the Combine on a Friday and taking your questions and sitting here with us. John, thanks so much. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely.